Ebola, SARS, COVID-19, all these viruses have two things in common. Firstly, they are all deadly and they cause terrible epidemics. But also, they all come from the small creatures that we know as bats. So what is so special about bats that make them transmit all these deadly viruses? It turns out actually that bats are living happily with viruses without having any diseases or symptoms. So I guess the question is, why aren't we? When you get infected, the virus enters your bloodstream and invades certain type of cells that are different for each virus. Would it be lung, kidney, liver, which is why you get different symptoms and different disease for each virus. This adventurous mission that the virus does is for only one purpose, reproduction. Which is not gonna be really hard given that the virus is merely genetic material, package it in a protein shell. When the virus enters the cell, it doesn't want to destroy it. It actually wants to use it to replicate its genetic material. So it inserts its genetic material and hijacks the cellular machinery to replicate it for them. And when there are finally enough replicas, these genetic materials get packaged into protein shells, creating new viruses. And the cell ruptures, spreading all these new viruses into the neighboring cells, which is why you get sick. But luckily, we have security for that, our immune system. The immune system is pretty much based on three different components, an alarm system, first responders, specialized team. Your body can be attacked by many, many creatures, fungi, parasites, viruses, bacteria. And the only way an alarm system can work is by having sensors for everything that is foreigner to your body. Once the virus enters the cell, the sensors do not only see that there is foreign genetic material, but also that this genetic material is not supposed to be outside the nucleus. So it is suspicious, not the perfect disguise. So it triggers the alarm system, which is in reality a protein called interferon. This interferon has a very specific message to all the body cells, which is eliminate this problem in all possible ways, including killing the entire cell. So it activates a set of genes that are responsible for, firstly, preventing the virus from replicating. Secondly, warning other cells to be ready in case this infection spreads to them. And it even might tell the infected cell to commit suicide to eliminate the infection. And finally, it triggers the first responders and the specialized team to pretty much destroy the infected cell. As you can see, this immune system is pretty strong and determined to eliminate the infection, which is good. But sometimes it backfires, causing inflammation that makes the condition even worse. Then how did these guys figure it out? Scientists found that the alarm system in bad cells is always activated, regardless of the presence of the virus. But that gets really confusing. If the interferon is always on, then why do the bats not get an inflammation? Well, there's another trick there. It looks like the bats have an almost dysfunctional inflammation mechanism compared to humans. I think by this time you've pretty much guessed why do we get some of the worst viruses from bats. Well, only the viruses that are strong enough to stay viable in the bats are the ones who get transmitted to humans. So if these viruses were able to combat the bats immune system, they would have really less trouble causing humans serious disease. In other words, if these viruses already played in the Premier League, they would have no trouble with a much smaller team. 
There's only one question remaining. How did the bats become like that? Why did they adapt to live with viruses? I think we can answer that by indicating the one thing that makes the bats different from any other mammals. Exactly, flying. Because flying requires so much energy, it forces the bats to break down their food so fast that it also produces so much toxic byproducts. These toxic byproducts attack the DNA of the bat cells, which makes a lot of DNA broken pieces roaming around the cell outside the nucleus. And you know by now that this would trigger the alarm. But for the cell to adapt with the alarm always being on, it has to neglect it and not get an inflammation. At the end of the video, I want to mention the real names of the analogies that I used. The sensors for the viral DNA are called red-like receptors and toll-like receptors. The first responders are macrophages, natural killer cells. The specialized team is T cytotoxic cells. And the alarm system in case of viruses is the interferon. See you in the next episode.